this demo allows to show how Inventive can uh, treat uh, the problem of um, op design optimization of uh, a clipping mechanism. The, the assembly we can see on the screen is um, the assembly that models the clipping of the blue component uh, inside the black component, which is a, a plastic component. And there is a spring clip component shown in red, um, which is the component that is going to apply the uh, force um, that will be a function of its uh, deformation, opening deformation of the, the red clip. As you can see, when we move the blue clip horizontally, uh, the system changes. There is a tang tangency between the circle arc on the black component here and the one on the blue component. Um, so the system moves and the forces we have represented on the right uh, change as well. Um, you can see as well that uh, if I go on the spring clip component, uh, I open this component. Um, we'll see on the definition of the spring clip that um, there is uh, first some uh, geometry in the sketch, but also uh, the user who has created this component has defined some variables and some equations here on the right. Those equations are the equations of the physical behavior of the spring clip. Uh, that is to say, the equation that calculate uh, how much force will be applied by the clip when it's uh, when it's deformed. This type of component is called a smart component. Um, we call it smart component because it it allows to include in an inventive model the knowledge of uh, an expert. For example, here the expert of uh, the the clip has included his knowledge into this component, and now this component can be um, reused into uh, many inventive assemblies um, done by uh, other engineers who are not specialists of the spring clip system. So I close this component and go back in the assembly. One thing we can see in this assembly uh, is that um, we have represented on the right the different uh, forces that are applied on the, on the system. The forces here on the right represent the forces between the blue component and the black component. So we have represented the um, first this vertical force, which is uh, the clip force that we have to overcome in order to open the system. Um, this force is uh, the friction force at the point of contact between the black component and the blue component. This force is the normal force at the point of contact between the blue and black component. And thus, this force here is the resulting pull force that the user has to apply. So obviously, when we change the position of the clip, we see all of those forces update. And the pull force calculated on the upper top view that we have here is 3.97 newtons at 10 millimeters. We also have the same pull force on the other side, 3.97. So the total pull force is the sum of those two forces. So it's equal to 7.95 uh, newtons in uh, in this position. So it's possible uh, in Excel to make a recording of the total pull force in function of the position of the uh, spring clip. So I select the uh, the displacement of the blue component. I select the total pull force, then I say uh, tolerance in motion. Uh, we are going to record only the nominal of the position of the clip, and we are going to record the mean, um, worst case, and plus and minus 3 sigma of the total pull force. So we start the recording, and then we can say we are going to step the value of the position of the system until let's say uh, 13 millimeters and the step size will be 0 0.2 millimeters so i start the movement and at, at every step the force calculation update updates uh, and we reach 13 millimeters of travel of the of the striker so i stop the tolerance in motion 
and now in uh, Excel we get um, some uh, columns which uh, give uh, the variation of the pull force in function of the displacement of the blue component which is uh, the striker so I select the data that I want to have in this uh, list I'm going to include the striker displacement like this so we see in this curve what is uh, um, nominal pull force in green plus and minus 3 sigma pull force in uh, red and, and violet those pull forces represent 99.7% of the cases that are, will be possible and then the blue curves are the worst case curves so we see that the lower, case, lower worst case curve is very unrealistic because it calculates a force that is negative so it shows that the, the worst case is very often on a, an assembly with many contributors uh, something that is quite unrealistic so then um, another comment on this model is that um, in, in this model you can see that the user who has created this model has added in the model a lot of uh, handwritten calculations um, tables from uh, test data uh, result of prototyping um, that may come from diverse sources so it's quite interesting to note here that uh, this data we have here included in Excel when we will save the assembly file uh, it will be saved uh, inside of the assembly file so everything that is in Excel will be saved in the assembly uh, .env file so it's a way to save the Excel data at the same time as we save the inventive data so it allows to maybe better um, uh, store the, the Excel files rather than uh, keeping them locally on, uh, on the, the computer of uh, only one, uh, one user it allows to distribute it to, uh, to many users <coughs>